What's up everyone, welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. So in today's video, we are doing an outside crown molding. Um, I have done uh, another crown molding video and it's very popular. Uh, everybody was shown the inside corner and so today we're gonna show you an outside corner. Uh, this would be the outside of a cabinet, outside of a wall, where the corner comes to you, all right? Not something in the corner, but outside. Not inside, but outside. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and uh, well, stay tuned. All right, guys, so just like I said in my intro, if you're coming over from the inside corner video, this is gonna show you how to do an outside corner. So uh, basically concept is exactly the same as the previous video. You'll hear uh, a couple uh, repetitions here because this might be the first video that someone's watching. So how to cut crown molding for beginners. So if you're uh, looking to just start the outside corner demonstration, uh, skip ahead to the time I put right here um, and you can get on to that. So for all of you whose this is your first video, Video, I'm going to teach you some tricks to make you good at cutting crown molding. Now, a lot of professionals are going to tell you that the best way to cr cut crown molding is by uh, coping the crown molding and, and doing all the fancy tricks that finished carpenters do. I'm not a finished carpenter, but I install trim all the, all the time. Um, I'm not the absolute best at it but uh, my theory is always do your best and caulk the rest. Um, and you can pretty much get away with uh, being a finished carpenter in most instances. There's a few times when I run into stuff that I can't figure out on my own. So number one most important thing when cutting crown on its flats means we're putting the flat pieces of the crown exactly how it sits up against the wall on the flats. Uh, maybe that's focusing, maybe that's not. But there's flats on, on the side of your trim here. So just as it goes up on the wall, we are going to cut on the flats. Except for when we cut it on the miter saw, we're going to turn it upside down. So if you remember anything from this video, turn the crown upside down and put it on your saw. Okay? So if you want this to be the top, this needs to be upside down, right? And then we'll cut it like this. If you want this to be your top, this profile, you can, you can do it either way. A lot of people do the do top heavy crown and they do the, the widest, thickest part up here at the top. You can do it however you want, okay? So usually though, usually the thick part here is upside down, okay? So when we put it on our saw here, I have crown stops that were sent to me by Scott Fontana of crownstops.net. Um, he has got some awesome, awesome uh, accessories for the uh, DeWalt miter saw. So now I'm going to zoom you in close here so you can see what I'm doing on the saw. Show you. See these crown stops? They go up and they go down and you set them exactly where you need your, your wood to set. You screw them down and then they're set there. They're always right there. Um, I'm going to do a separate video and review these. Um, they've been pretty awesome. Now the other way in my other video is to mask this off with a piece of blue masking tape here. Um, let's see if I have some masking tape. Of course I don't have any readily available, so um, you'll just have to bear with me, okay? So if you did that, you just put a black magic marker there um, indicating that that's where you want to line your crown up. So there's nothing wrong with, with uh, being on the job site or being at your house and just eyeballing this. What's it gonna look like when I put this up and like visualize exactly how this looks, okay? I've already cut an outside corner here so if I were to put this together um, with another piece, it would form an outside corner. So there's no, real, uh, there's no real designation that says, hey, you need to cut it to your 45 to the right if you're cutting you know, the piece on the left. You, know, there's, you just need to visualize it. So uh, you, know, you put it up here, we can cut it back at this angle here. Somebody will be like, all right, you cut that too fast. Okay, so, all right, we zoom back out. Okay, we visualize it. We're putting the, the top piece on our cabinet here, like this. 
okay? And then where does our piece come in that needs to go beside this, all right? So one of the things I will tell you is if you're going around a cabinet or you are putting this up against something uh, or a, uh, going around a corner, the best thing to do is to mark the uh, trim while it's on the wall. Now let's cut to something. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is a cabinet in my garage here, okay? But let's say I was cutting the crown molding here and let's say this went all the way to the wall and it was flat back here uh, at the back of the wall. Now, the best and most effective way to do this is not by the tape measure because you can, you can easily screw up the measurement between the two and exactly what line did you read, what line was it, you know, uh, was it on this side of the 16th or on that side of the 16th, it really doesn't matter, okay? Put your crown up there where you, where you want it and then scribe it with a pencil right there at the corner. Make it as, as pronounced as possible, okay? Make it fine and you want, you want a fine tip mechanical pencil. If you make a big fat mark, you don't know where you were supposed to be on the mark, right? Left, right, I don't know, was I in the center? Okay, so just remember what side you were gonna cut on. Now, I always do a cheat for myself if I'm, if I'm up here like this and I say, okay, I need my mark to be like that and then I want my mark or my, my cut to be somewhere like this, okay? So mark the board which way you need to cut it, okay? Even come down here and cheat and say, hey, I need to cut it at that angle. So that when we come back to the saw, which is right here, okay? When I come back to my saw and I go to cut my piece off, I can set my crown. See the, the part that we marked upside down is now on the top. So now I come back to my saw, I put it against my flats, in this case, my crown stops, right? Awesome crown stops, by the way. Scott, okay. Come back to my 45. Hey, look at this. Now, I can come down, I can put my blade right on that mark and see exactly where my piece is supposed to get cut, okay? Now, I think that I have a pretty good, pretty good focus here. Now, you can walk this in exactly how you want. You can walk it in um, to exactly what you need on this piece. Okay, so if you cut and you're like, oh man, that might be a little too close, you can back it up. All right, and then you check it out here and you see how close I am to my mark if it would focus, you know, why wouldn't it focus, you know? So I have my mark here and I've cut it. If you always go to the other side of your mark and then you can walk the blade in right up to your mark, okay? So now let's zoom back out here. Now, now that you've cut your piece to it, jeez, now that you've cut your piece to the correct size, okay? Whoop. <laughs> All right, you cut your piece to the correct size now you come up with your other piece, right? And visualize how it's supposed to be. Okay, you've got a flat end, right? You got your flat end here, and you got your piece here. Visualize what it needs to be, right? Okay, so that means that we need to come back at a 45 this way on this piece. Piece of cake. Put your crown upside down, let's cut this 45. So if you have a problem, you know, visualizing that when you put it up there and like which way that needs to go, mark it on your board, okay? Mark it like this. Don't be scared to mark it, okay? So that when you come back to your saw, you put your crown upside down, right? Shoop, okay? Now that means you need to come back the other way. Look at that, all right. Now we come back to our other way, go ahead and cut it. Come back up to our wall here, got our crown here. Uh-huh, I got our crown here, and look at that. It comes to a point, that's your outside corner, okay? So there's no, uh, there's no rhyme or reason on what angle is what or which, which side needs to go where. Or, um, if I have my trim on the left side of my saw and it's upside down, I need to cut my 45 to the right. Just relax, visualize it in your head, 
take your piece out there. You know, you could do a scrap piece and just mark it, okay? Boom, you cut it in the opposite direction and you make your 45 like that, okay? So that's, that's if your corners are 45 and 45, you know? If you have a perfect 90 degree corner, it's gonna meet up beautifully, okay? But is that ever gonna happen? <laughs> no, that's never gonna happen. Even if you just framed out the wall and you just did all of it, it's never gonna be perfect, okay? So sometimes what you can do is glue these together. Um, I, I use a, a two-part glue with the activator, glue them together so that you can cheat it. You can say, hey, these are glued together. I'm just gonna put these on here and then we're gonna nail them down and they're gonna look great because it's going to keep that tight miter even though my walls are a little off. Do your best, caulk the rest. Okay, so that's how to do an outside. If you needed to do an inside, very exact same thing. We go back into the wall. You're looking at the wall. If you're like, hey, that needs to be kind of cut back this way, okay? So you take your pencil, you mark it. Hey, it's gotta be cut back this way. Go to your saw, turn your crown upside down, cut your angle, put it back in the wall. Does that look right? Yes, it does. Take your other piece. What way does that need to cut? It needs cut like that. So draw it on your board, turn it upside down, and then cut it, okay? Put your piece up on the wall to measure it. You don't, it, this is not rocket science. It doesn't have to be super complicated. You can measure it with the tape measure or you can measure it with your, with your piece of wood. It doesn't matter. Just make a fine, accurate, accurate mark on your board where you know you're gonna make it. What I always do is start at a corner and work out or start at this corner and work back, but overcut the piece, okay? So if you, had, if you needed to do this little spot and it was two feet, cut it at 28 inches, cut it at 32 inches. Cut it so that you have your corner back there and you have a starting point. Then once you've mastered that and you're like, oh, I've got that corner, I know that inside corner, I've got that down, put it up against there, and then you can hit it all the way back to the corner, mark it out here, and then you can say, okay, I'm gonna mark it here, or I'm gonna cut it this way. Then cut it way out there, cut it with six inches left to go to make sure that it's going to do exactly what you wanna do, okay? Then if you have an issue, you can always cut it back the other way if you left six inches, because the distance from about here to here, based on how big your trim is, is three to four inches. So if you cut it six inches further out here, you have room for another cut if you miscut it. You don't scrap that whole piece off. I do it all the time. So just visualize it in your head, think about it, hold the pieces up there, whatever you need to do, whatever, you know, whatever makes sense to you and make it happen. If this wasn't one down and dirty video, I don't know what to tell you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you got any questions, uh, reach out, uh, no big deal. Uh, put, put your questions in the comments below. Um, I know that it probably made sense to uh, some people. It made sense to me while I was making it, so maybe it doesn't make sense to you. Reach out in the comments, we'll try to work through it together. But I hope this uh, video helped you guys out and I hope to see you click that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into. And we'll see you on the next video.